Congresswoman, your reaction to what's coming out of the White House right now? It's very clear to me, and I think the rest of America, that President Biden and the administration, President Biden is a man without a plan. There was no exit strategy. The last we heard about this was a press release from the White House in April. Um, I don't think there's any argument. We saw yesterday with Biden's uh, press conference, he was arguing on whether or not we should have left, uh, should be leaving Afghanistan. The vast majority of Americans, Republicans and Democrats agree with that sentiment. But it's the how we are leaving that just leaves so many questions that aren't being answered. He refused to answer any media questions yesterday. They're not answering questions from members of Congress. And I'm hearing reports that upwards of 10,000 United States citizens have been left behind in Kabul. Yeah, Congresswoman, I know you're from, obviously, the great state of South Carolina. You also graduated from the Citadel. Um, what are you hearing from your constituents, specifically those who may have served in um, Afghanistan? I know that there are, what, 46 South Carolinians who have died uh, in the past, what, 20 years serving in the U.S. military with our presence there in Afghanistan. What's their reaction to what has happened? It's been devastating, and it's been an emotional reaction for many folks, veterans, uh, families, Gold Star families, and my heart breaks for them. Their their work that they've done, the lives that were lost over the last 20 years, I would, are, were not in vain. Um, and in fact, I had many questions over the weekend: was what was all of this for? Um, we've had Citadel grads. One of them I was very close to when I was a cadet at the Citadel who lost his life in this battle in Afghanistan. And so for many folks in talking to our veterans in South Carolina over the last two or three days, it's been an emotional reckoning, um, grave disappointment, worry about our citizens getting out of there, and even uh, the same amount of concern and level of concern for the Afghans who supported our military, translators, for example, who are being left behind to be murdered by the Taliban. And if we'd had an exit strategy, a plan, a cohesive plan based on conditions, uh, we're never going to know if that would have been a better operation rather than what we're seeing today. Americans lifted out of the rooftop, off the rooftop of the embassy, thousands of Afghans trying to climb onto C-17s and falling to their death. It's been a horrible and horrific images that we've all been witnessing over the last couple of days. Yeah, we also know the history of the Taliban when it comes to women. Here's what the Taliban is saying about the future of women in Afghanistan now. We recognize the rights of the women which Islam gave them. Women can work, they can go to the school, they, work in, they can work in schools, they can work in hospitals. We assure the world that there will be no excesses against the women and everything will be done under the Islamic laws. Uh, that was a little hard to understand, but essentially they're trying to say things are going to be different, that women will be allowed to work. They can work in schools. They can go to school. Uh, even though if you look deeper, it's probably a religious school. Uh, I wanted to get your thoughts on the concern you might have for the women of Afghanistan, some of whom, by the way, did not know the Taliban before they were born after 9-11. Right. I'll believe it when I see it. And when they talk about the rights of women, they're talking about women living under Sharia law. And it sort of disgusts me to see Americans turn their, black on, their back on the United States flag, talking about oppression here. Let's talk about real oppression in countries like Afghanistan, where women really don't have rights. They will not be educated. Child brides that will be sold off to men. I mean, this is what will happen if we don't protect women in Afghanistan without having a solid plan, a cohesive plan with our allies in the region, um, that's what will happen. And I, I don't care what PR strategy the Taliban has, um, this is a grave situation for women and children all across the country. Um, and just quickly, your response to how uh, President Biden has handled this overall. Do you think that he should have returned to Camp David? And were you surprised to hear from Jake Sullivan today, who said that uh, President Biden has not spoken with any world leaders following the fall of Afghanistan yet? Unbelievable. He took he booked a round trip ticket from Camp David from his vacation at Camp David yesterday to appear at a White House press conference to read a speech somebody else wrote and then turned his back on even sympathetic media, refusing to answer 
their questions. Uh, the fact that he promised the American people in April that he would work with our allies in the region, would work with uh, other countries and organizations to have a safe exit from Afghanistan, and this is how he leaves everybody hanging, including 10,000 American citizens who are stuck in Kabul, desperate to get out, hiding their families each and every night, moving every night to ensure their family safety for fear of retribution from the Taliban. He's turned his back on American citizens. It's unbelievable what's happening, and I have a lot of questions. And you know, quite frankly, this has been a war. It's been 20 years. We've spent trillions of dollars, and there's a lot of blame to go around. But most recently, there was no exit strategy, and we have devastated. We had six or seven thousand military now have to go back to Afghanistan. During the war, we had, on average, I would guess around nine to eleven thousand troops on the ground, and now look, we're going to be at six or seven thousand just to secure the Kabul airport. It's unbelievable what's happening right now. It really is. Uh, Congresswoman uh, Nancy Mace, thank you very much for taking the time to speak with us. We